there. You've chosen an awesome channel because Pastor John is talking about violent faith. Yes, you do not want to miss this message because he is talking about something that will transform your weak faith into great faith. Pastor John is going to be giving you five practical steps that will wake you up, shake up and turbo boost your faith. So come on, let's dive in and hear what Pastor John has got to say. I want to speak to you this morning on violent faith. If you have your Bibles, Matthew chapter 15, verse 21, all right? Matthew 15, 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman. Thank God for the woman. Bump your neighbor and say, thank God for the woman. No, I really mean it. Thank God for the woman. Most of the people that followed Jesus were women. Most of the people that supported Jesus financially were But thank God for the men as well. We're catching up, men. Come on, and, I, and, and the men of God said, uh, Amen. Thank you, men. Amen. And there was a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And Jesus welcomed her and embraced her. And right there and then, he prayed for her and spent about half an hour with her. And then he had some, a meal with her. And from thence, he then went on, on his journey. Is that what it says there? What does it say in verse 23? But he answered her, not a word. A lot of you would have backslidden right there and then. A lot of you would have picked up an offense right there and then. Don't look at me in that religious tone this morning. A lot of you would have been offended right there and then. A lot of you would have said, what kind of a pastor is that? I greeted him and he just carried on walking. I invited him to my house, but he refused to come. Verse 23, but he answered her not a word and his disciples came to make matters worse and urged him saying, send her away for she cries out after us. Verse 24, but finally he does answer her and he gives her seemingly the wrong answer. He said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then... She wrote a letter. She took, uh, opened up her Facebook page and posted a nasty post about the terrible ministry of Jesus and, and how devastated she was. And she looked for all the other wounded Christians and together they had a huge, is that what it says there? Then she came and what? She came and what? She came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. And to make matters even worse, he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. He was calling her a little dog. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then Jesus answered her and said, a woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now, Father, I thank you for your word that comes to us. That you said faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of faith. Uh, by the word of God. I want to thank you today that we will not allow, Lord, any man-made opinion. Uh, Lord, we will not allow any circumstance. We will not allow the troubles of this world to derail us from our miracle, to stop us, God, from accessing you and all that you have for us. You are a good God who desires to do good things for us. And today, God, I thank you that our eyes and hearts are fixed on you to receive what it is that you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Lift your hands and say, I serve a good God. Say it again. I serve a good God who desires to do good things through my life. Hallelujah. Now, when you look at this passage of Scripture, uh, it's quite a remarkable story. And I don't know about you, but if you look at the times that we're living in, how many of you would say that there are some real, really violent things that are happening in our world today? You look right across the world. There are some terrible things happening right here in South Africa as well. Uh, but it's, it's terrible all over the world. We are truly living in some violent times. How many of you would say amen to that? 
All right. And we know that behind all of this mayhem, all of this chaos, all of this uh, terrible thing, it is Satan, his fallen angels, and demon spirits. And I want you to know that the devil is not some cute little red creature with little horns. How many of you remember this comic, Hot Stuff? Those of you old enough, you put your hands up. You remember Hot Stuff? We used to get that comic. And I used to read that comic. And I thought the devil was a cute little creature. Look, little cute little pointy ears. And he's got a nappy on. And he's got his tail. And his pitchfork in the one hand. What a cute little devil he is. That is the, the, that's what, how the devil wants you to think about him. Let me tell you, that is not what he's, what he's made out to be. He's out to do damage. The devil is out to maim you, cripple you, paralyze you, torment you, kill, steal, and destroy you as well. How many of you know that? And I'm here to tell you that when he's finished with you, he's going to come after your children and their children's children and their children's children's children. We need to realize in this day and age that we are living in that there are essentially two kingdoms. I spoke about this on Heritage Day. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And these two kingdoms are diametrically opposed to each other. And John 10.10 10 says, Jesus said, The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? Didn't end there. What, does it, what did it end by saying? But I have come that you might have a little bit of life, weak life, just Christmas time life, Easter time life, weekend time life. No, that you might have life every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hallelujah. When you're on the mountain, when you're in the valley, when you're on top, hallelujah, when, all, when everybody's praising you, when nobody's praising you, you can still have the life of God. He said you can have life and life more abundantly. Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Let me tell you, if there's ever been an attack on the church, it is now. The devil knows that his time is running out. So he is doing everything to discredit the church. He is doing everything to discredit ministries. He is doing everything to take out marriage. It is not about Adam and Steve. It is about Adam and Eve. That is the Bible. The Bible. We love every single person. Whatever your disposition is, we love you. But we have to preach the Bible. Hallelujah. And the devil is doing everything to discredit the kingdom of God, everything to discredit ministries. But I thank God for you. I thank God for ministries today that preach the word uncompromisingly. Hallelujah. And that there is still today the manifestation of purity and innocence. Amen. Signs, wonders, and miracles. That there are still people that know how to lay a hold of the altar of the horns of heaven. Heaven. They know how to pray. They know how to fast. They know where to run to when there is trouble. They know that there is one greater than them that stands in their midst. His name is Jesus Christ. And he is the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. The devil is a defeated foe. Hallelujah. Jesus is not having to refight the devil and having a rematch. I know in the UFC there's a rematch and in WWE there's a re they have rematches. But not with the kingdom of God. Jesus is in no rematch. The devil was annihilated on the cross 2,000 years ago. And you and I are not trying to finish the work of Jesus. When he ascended on high, he sat down at the right hand of the Father, signifying what? The work was finished. Bump your neighbor and say, neighbor, there's nothing more that you can add to the finished work of the cross. So we're not trying to fight the devil. He was defeated 2,000 years ago. You empower him every time you believe a lie. Every time you open your heart to something that is negative, something that is contrary to the word. The kingdom culture is a counterculture to the culture of the kingdom. The kingdom culture, the manifesto, is this book that we hold in our hands. And if you receive a word other than the word that's in this book, 
What's going to happen? You believe a lie. And when you believe a lie, you empower the devil. The devil doesn't have power. He was stripped of his authority. He was stripped of his power. He is the father of lies. So he deals with illusions and delusions and deceptions. When you receive a lie that's not in this book, but you receive a lie and you look at the natural and you begin to feed your spirit on eat news and news 24 and what else is being said out there even in Facebook you are you are not counterculture you are you are receiving the culture of this worldly system and it will be your demise it will take you down it'll rob you of your joy it'll rob you of your faith it'll rob you of your victory come on now Amen. So the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the good news is Jesus didn't stop there. He said, and the violent, do we have any violent people here today? And the violent take it by force. Now we're not talking about you being violent in MMA and you got your black belt in jujitsu and Roman Greco wrestling. We're talking about violent in worship. Violent in worship isn't you can you can be a violent worshiper and be praising God in a very fast song when the ark of the covenant came back to the city of David, David was a violent worshiper. He was dancing and whirling and twirling so so furiously that his clothes were coming off his body. Can you say praise the Lord? Do we have any violent people here today? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So Jesus said to this woman, O oh woman, great, O oh woman, great, O oh man, great is your faith. That word great means violent. That word great means strong. It means authoritative. Anybody here have authoritative faith? You have uh, authority. Anybody know that you have authority here? Come on, in the name of Jesus, you've got authority. When you say the name of Jesus, it's just as if Jesus himself were standing on this earth and saying the word that you are saying. Great is violent. Great means strong. I want to talk to you about five things that violent faith does. If you're going to do anything significant and worthwhile for God, let me tell you, you're going to need some violent faith. It's amazing. None of his disciples exemplified violent faith. It was always the outsiders, always those that people paid no attention to. Here is a Canaanite woman, and the kind of faith that she demonstrates is a violent faith. You ready for five things that will change your life? Violent faith, number one, will never, ever give up. Look at three people right now and tell them, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you've been through. But do not give up. Do not give up. Do not give up. Come on, you need to say it right now. They're in Galway. They're in Phoenix. Those of you in live stream, if there's nobody in your house, tell yourself, I will not give up. Hallelujah. I will not give up. You've come too far to give up right now. God has done too much in your life for you to give up. There has been too many victories that you have won for you right now to throw your towel in for this next battle that you're in. Look at somebody right now and tell them, don't give up. Don't give up. Come on. Come on. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hallelujah. In the natural, you might want to give up. There might be those around you that say you should give up, but you, we're not about to give up. Hallelujah. Come on. How many of you remember on the 7th of June, 2016, we could have given up. The dome burnt. We got here and everything was gone. Did we give up? No. We got into the car park. We, we, we got together. I used a loud hailer, those of you remember, and we began to worship God. Hallelujah. We carried right on. We carried right on. Did it hurt? Absolutely. Did we ask a million questions? Absolutely. But we refused to give up. Bump your name and say, don't give up. 
And then about a year and a half later, we were in the tent. We got the call. The tent has come down. We got here. It was terrible to see what had happened. The tent straight, straight to bits. Did we give up? No. We assembled again and we lifted up the name of Jesus and began to worship our God and our Savior. Why? Because violent faith never gives up. Violent faith never gives up. But your neighbor say, neighbor, do not give up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to know that faith is the greatest source of power available to you and I. Faith is the greatest source of power available to you and I. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I love to study faith. Ever since that time, Pastor Fred handed me that Kenneth E. Hagen book on faith. When I got that book, I tried to read it and couldn't make heads or tails of that book. And then finally, I went to Pastor Fred and said, Dad, I, I can't understand this book. He said, you're trying to read it with your brain instead of with your heart. And remember, I'd, I'd been a trained as a pharmacist and pharmacy as a precise science. So you use logic. You use your analytical brain, the side of the part of the brain. You use, uh, uh, you know, just reason and all of that. But when I pushed logic and reason out of my brain and I began to read the Bible and this book with my heart, suddenly the light came on and I began to understand. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? And from that time, all I do is study faith. And I want to encourage you, study faith as well. Why? Because faith is the language of the kingdom. But also faith, faith gives you and I the victory. Faith is the victory. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is it? Our faith. Say, my faith is what overcomes the world. My faith is what gives me the victory. Now, did you notice he didn't say it was your pastor's faith or your grand, granny's faith or your wife's faith or your next door neighbor's faith. It is your faith. You have to get faith on the inside of your heart. I can't get it in there for you. You got to make time. You got to get up early or otherwise late at night, whatever your time is. You got to get a hold of the Bible, open the Bible. Some of you might have to blow the dust off the Bible, but that's okay. All right, open up the Bible and read the Word and get faith on the inside of you because faith is the victory. Hallelujah. Faith is an inexhaustible subject and is as vast as God Himself. And what I love about faith is that there are no limits when it comes to faith. Faith knows no limits. How do I know? Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, He said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Believing is, has to do with your faith. And he said, if you can believe, if you can get faith on the inside of you, hallelujah, then I don't care what the doctors have said. I don't care what the economy is doing. I don't care what's happening out there in the natural world. Everything out there is subject to change. Everything out there is subject to change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you can get faith on the inside of you, faith knows no limitations. That's why we are declaring 2019 to be a limitless year for you. Can you say praise the Lord? Faith is the greatest source of power available to you. I want you to know that. And we, we can look at, at science and what science has told us. You know, when you look at science, the nuclear science told us about the power of the atomic bomb, nuclear power. And the bomb that was thrown down on Hiroshima, I don't know how many kilotons of, of TNT that was. But let me tell you, the power of faith is greater than all the power of that nuclear blast. And then we can look at electrical science and all that they taught us about the power of electricity. And I don't know exactly how much power is needed to generate lights, to light up a city like that. But I'm here to tell you, of all of that power, the power of faith is greater. 
The power of faith is greater. And then we can look at the sun and then scientists have, and they've declared solar energy and the tremendous heat that comes from the sun and all the power that is wrapped up in the sun. But of all that power, the power of faith is still greater. And then, and then biologists look at water and the waves and, and the hydropower and all the power uh, waves that crash and the power that is generated by the moving ocean, by the waves. Let me tell you, of all these things that I've spoken to you, their power is limited, but not so with the power of faith. The power of faith is greater. Lift your hands and say, when I get the word in my heart, and faith is manufactured. The God kind of faith has a power that knows no limit. Every other power in this world has a limitation, but not so with the power of faith working through my life in Jesus' name. How does faith come? We know that faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing, and hearing. And when you've heard some more, what do you need to do? you got to hear some more. As long as you are wrapped up in this body of flesh, let me tell you, you need to be hearing the Word. There are so many other words that want to catch your attention. So many other sound waves that are looking to distract you. So many other things that are out there right now, right now. There are words traveling in this atmosphere. Right now on Facebook, there is gossip and scandal and, and all kinds of stuff that are going to dampen your spirit. I pay no attention to all of that. I said it a long time ago. People are entitled to their opinions. But those opinions do not matter. They don't count as far as I'm concerned. But if you can minister to somebody from the Word, hallelujah, and encourage them with the Word and give them a now word. Let me tell you, you're not only doing yourself a, 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 a service, a good service. You are also helping their faith. Every seed that is sown will reap a harvest. I have purpose to sow good seeds. Do you know that you can sow bad seeds with the words that you speak? Do you know that there are people today that are reaping havoc, uh, harvest of disease and infirmity and sickness? And sometimes it doesn't even come to them. It comes to their children because of the seed that they have sown. Do not waste your time. We don't have time. We don't have time to worry about what he's saying and what they think and what that and you you've got all you've got all you got to think about is wake up in the morning get your heart full of the word and then as you go about your day out of the fullness of your day of your heart you begin to minister God's seed a good word I speak a word of encouragement I speak a word of healing I speak a word of deliverance I speak a word that would rescue I speak a word that would restore I speak a word that would bless hallelujah bless go around your day blessing people Go around your day blessing people. If you know that person well and you need to uh, rebuke, then you can do that. But you do that in love. And then you build up. Hallelujah. If that person has given you permission to speak into their lives, then do that personally. Do not do it on Facebook. You make yourself looking like a poor, poor man. You look like an idiot when you speak stuff on Facebook that has no bearing to anybody else. Come on now. Oh, I'm trying to help people here today. Hallelujah. Bless people. Hallelujah. Encourage people. Why? Because you don't want to reap a bad harvest. Oh, then pastor needs to pray for you. And then it's the church's fault. And then it's something in leadership. No, it's what you are sprouting out of your mouth that is causing the damage and the infirmity and for you to lose the business. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? I'm just trying to help you this morning. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Come on. we got a too big a job to be worried about what everybody else is saying. we got too big a job to worry about this and that and whatever else. Hallelujah. Come on. We, we're... We're advancing the kingdom. There are people out there that are dying and going to hell. And we're worrying about people's opinions. 
Come on, man. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Every head bowed, every eye closed right now in this place. I know that I haven't finished. I will finish tonight. Five things about violent faith. Five things about violent faith. You see, I feel it strong in my heart, man. What kind of a seed are you sowing? Sometimes we, we take on what Adam did in the garden. And we blame people. Blame others for our mess. Blame others for our calamity. Blame others because we are losing out. We need to take responsibility. No, what kind of a seed have I sown? Hallelujah. Praise God. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus came 2,000 years ago to die on a cross for you and for me. And He loved us so much that He was willing to be the ultimate sacrifice. Take on all of our sins, all of our iniquities, all of our failures. Jesus didn't come to die on a cross so that we could play church just on a Sunday and then Monday to Friday live the way we want. You have been purchased with costly blood. Those of you that are supposed to be Christians, let me tell you, 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 you do not belong to yourself. You do not own yourself. Jesus purchased you back with His blood. You are 100% His property. 100% you belong to God. You don't belong to God just when you come to church and you lift your hands and then you say hallelujah for the first time. And all during the week, you've been involved in all kinds of stuff. When I look at the person Daniel, for example, the Bible says that he was living in Babylon, a foreign land, being captive as a little, child, as a little boy in this land. And then the king's eunuch looked for people that were brilliant and people that were reputable. But the Bible says that Daniel refused to defile himself with all of the king's delicacies. We're living in a land of sin. There's a world of sin out there. That doesn't mean we don't have to enjoy life, but we can live without defilement of sin. That's how God wants you to live. If you're born again, you ought to be 100% His property, Monday through to Sunday. You can't be in church on Sunday and then living like the devil Monday to Saturday. No wonder your marriage is upside down. No wonder you're up one day and down the other. In your business venture, if you are unequally yoked, don't come to us to lay hands on you to pray, Pastor, I need a miracle because my business is in a mess. What got you into that unequally yoked business partner in the first place? Oh, because he was your connection. Is that what it was? Now he's turned on you and now he's suing you. I know people that did that. Don't look at me like that. I know people that lost everything. A Christian, unequally yoked. You have no right doing business or being unequally yoked with a business partner. It's scriptural. It's scriptural. The, 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 the blood of Jesus purchased you 100%. You are God's property. Monday through to Sunday. Month in, month out. From the moment you wake up to the moment you lay your rest, you belong to God. Your thoughts are God. Your attitude is God. Now, I'm not saying we don't make a mistake. Of course we make mistakes. Of course we slip up. But I'm so grateful that we can come to God and say, God, you know what? I messed up. We don't carry on like as if nothing happened. And then we purposely defile ourselves and we purposely listen to all that would defile us and we look at stuff and we hear stuff. No, God doesn't, God doesn't work that way, child of God. God doesn't work that way. We are in this world, but not of this world. There ought to be something different. When the king looked at all the people that he had, Daniel stood head and shoulders above everybody else. There was something that set him apart. Not just because he had the spirit of excellence, but because he refused to defile himself. There was a purity about him. He would pray three times a day, fast, 
get himself into the Word. Come on in this place. You want that victory, you want that breakthrough, you want your blessing, but you don't want to read the Bible. You want God to do something amazing, but you still want to live a defiant life. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. The kind of seed that you sow determines the harvest that you are reaping. And I've seen it over and over again. I've seen even preachers that have been messing around. It's like when you go to hug them, they've got guns on them. Thinking like, what, what, why would you carry a gun as a preacher? Why would, you, why would you be surrounded with bodyguards that have guns? And then when you hear the story, the kid's got like, has a kidney transplant and they've got all kinds of diseases. No wonder. This is not the mafia. The kingdom of God is not mafia. It's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of light. The kind of seed that you sow determines the harvest that you will reap. Don't blame anybody else. If you got a bad harvest, you need to examine your heart. Hallelujah. With every head bowed, every eye closed right now, you need to examine your heart this morning. Come on, I've had to examine my heart this morning. All of us need to examine our hearts. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. Think you're serving God. You're doing God a disservice, actually. He said, I'll spit you out. I will spit you out if you are lukewarm. If you come with, well, with a half-hearted attitude, I will spit you out. That's Jesus speaking. I'm sorry. With every head bowed, every eye closed in this place. Because I hear the, God, the, the, the Lord saying, tell them to come out, to come out from those things. You've got to separate yourself, child of God. You've got to separate yourself, man of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the king put Daniel in charge of all the satraps and governors. God promoted him. Not because he had a partner. He was unequally yoked to a partner that had a government tender or whatever that is. Do you know that government tenders don't pay now? So, so, so. So forget about government tent. They don't pay you. They'll give you the job. You'll do the job. They won't pay you because they don't have the money. And you got your eyes on government tenders. You got yourself unequally yoked. Now look at where you're at. Get your eyes on Jesus this morning, family. Come on. Come on. Come on. Every head bowed, every eye closed. All over this place right now. Those of you that say, Pastor John, you know what? I've, I've had one foot in, one foot out. You've been speaking to me today. This is not to embarrass anybody. This is not to belittle anybody. But I'm, I would may as well sing you nursery rhymes and, you know, have coffee and scones out there afterwards than me not tell the truth. Tell the truth. I've got to just go with what the Spirit of God is telling me to do. This morning, the kind of seed that you sow determines the harvest that you want to reap. And if there are, have been some seeds that you have sown today, could it be that perhaps you are one foot in, one foot out? Could it be perhaps that maybe people can't tell the difference between you and the world? Can't tell the difference. We should be able to tell the difference, family. We should be able to see Jesus in you. Come on now. Hallelujah. Jesus was counterculture. He loved everybody, but He was counterculture. There was something different about Him. Hallelujah. And there is something different about you. If you're born again and washed in the blood of Jesus, you are 100% His. You are 100% His. With every head bowed right across the campuses, Phoenix, Galway, and you know who you are this morning. Nobody needs to know. And we're going to do things slightly different here this morning. I need the elders and the lay pastors and the pastors to just help me this morning. But those of you in this place that would say, Pastor John, it's me today you're talking to. 
I realize that the kind of harvest that I've reaped is because of the seed that I've sown. And the seed that I've sown is because my heart is not right with God. Yeah. There is defilement in whatever place, in whatever area of my life. Yeah. There is one foot in and one foot out. Yeah. There is a pulling away. There has been a taking my foot off the pedal, so to speak. But today, come on. I need you to step with both feet in the kingdom. Come on. I need you to come with everything that was, is within you and declare, I am 100% a child of God. That's, that's what God is telling me to tell you today. With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning, nobody looking around. You say, that's me today, Pastor. One foot in, one foot out. And yeah, I realize that there have been some bad seeds that I've sown because my heart hasn't been right. I, I, there's just been no peace right there in Phoenix. I'm talking to you in Galway. I'm talking to all of you. And right now, that's you. If that's you, every eye closed, nobody looking around. I want you to slip up your hand right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put your hand up high. Don't be shy. Put your hand up high. God bless you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Now, here's what I want you to do. When you put your hand up high, I want those leaders and everybody else to just come and stand in that row. They don't have to get into the chair. You can just stand in that row, wherever a hand is up. I'm not going to embarrass you this morning. I know there's a whole lot more of you. You're thinking, what about my status quo? What about my position? What will people think? Don't worry about that. It's got nothing to do with anybody. It's what God thinks this morning. And you need to respond this morning. For this to work in your life, you need to respond. Those of you that have got your hands lifted up here, Phoenix, Galway, I want everybody to say these words after me. Would you say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name. Just as I am. I'm so sorry for having one foot in and one foot out. I recognize today that you love me so much that you desire all of me. Your blood is so costly that it paid the full price for my salvation. And I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my mind. I give you my everything. And I come today. Jesus, right now, I repent for being half-hearted. I repent for being half in and half out. But I give you my all. Capture my heart once again. Set me ablaze. Set me on fire for you. Rekindle my love for you. For your word. For your presence. For the church of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your blood that cleanses me and washes me. Right now, I'm born again. Right now, I am made new. The old things have passed away. New things have come. And I belong to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Now, what I'd like to do, those of you that put your hands up, I know there's more of you. We want to pray with you, spend some time with you. We want to minister to you. We want to help you. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to just get up from your seats and follow the people that are on the end of the aisles. They're going to take you into a beautiful room and they're going to bless you. They're going to spend time with you. I want, I want that to happen in Phoenix as well. I want it to happen in Galway as well, right now. All right. Would you put your hands together and give them a big God bless you as you go right now. Just go. Go right now in Jesus' name. Don't be shy. Stand up right now. They're waiting for you. If you can follow those folks, that's right. Anybody else that you need to go, I want you to do that right now. We're going to hand back to Phoenix. We're going to hand back to Galway right now. Can we put our hands together and give them a big God bless you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand up right now. Amen. 
I don't know, I just keep getting this word back right now. The kind of harvest that you are looking for is determined by the seed. Now, I'm not, we're not taking another offering. How many of you know it's about what, what comes out of your heart and what comes out of your mouth? The Bible says that offense must come, but woe unto that man through whom that offense comes. I don't know about you, but that's quite a sobering thought. I've had to think like, is there anybody that I've offended? You know, because woe unto that man through whom that offense comes. So the kind of harvest that you are looking for is determined by the seed that you sow. And that seed that you sow is a, can be a verbal word, actions. Just your actions. How many of you know speak louder than your words? I love you, brother, but inside you're already planning their demise. Huh? I want you to bow your heads right now. And I want you to just examine your hearts right now in this place. Just examine your heart this morning. Come on. We're so quick to blame others. We have to take responsibility for what's happening in my life. We look at, take inventory and stock of my heart. Take inventory and stock of your heart. What kind of seed have you been sowing this past week? Have you been treating people? Have you been thinking about people? Father, I thank you right now. Let your spirit move upon every heart in this place. We don't want to be guilty, God, of sowing bad seed because that means a bad harvest. And we can't afford to reap a bad harvest, Lord. We can't. Not in this day and age. And I pray today, God, that you would forgive us. Forgive us where we've just spoken idle words, careless words. Forgive us where we have been neglectful, God, and just we haven't shown the love for whatever reason today, God, whether knowingly or unknowingly today. Right now, God, we purpose, like Daniel, that we would not defile ourselves with the things of this world. I pray today that there would indeed be a difference between us and the world. That we are the light and the salt of this world. And today, I thank you. Let your spirit move upon every person here today. In Jesus' mighty name. Lift your hand and say right now, I receive the word. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. I purpose that my ears will incline themselves to the word of God. I will feed myself the world, the word. I will build myself on the word. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. I am a faith person that has a faith covenant with a faith God in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, what did I tell you? Was that not awesome? That was a wow teaching and I feel like my faith wants to tackle some of those giants in my life. What about you? Hey, don't miss out on future messages from Pastor John. So be sure to like, share and hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching us. See you soon.